What's up, guys? Today, I'd like to talk about one of the verses that non-believers make fun of. And, frankly, most believers don't really understand. Um, I find this very interesting. I'm calling this video, The Talking Snake. Now, the Adam and Eve story, everybody knows it. kind of just go along with this verse because they believe and don't look any further into it and non-believers may use this for a reason not to believe at all. What is the talking snake? What is it? What is it referring to? Is it an animal? What are we dealing with here? Because you know, in the scripture says this thing was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's a wild animal. This statement is misinterpreted a lot. Um, taking another look at it, I now see it as the serpent was more crafty than any wild animal. You know, simply stating that more elusive, more, more animals can hide and smell and hear and see way better than we can and they're pretty elusive most animals but this thing whatever it was was more crafty and then this thing said to the woman did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden well, first of all these, these Adam and Eve it doesn't record them being like scared or shocked or anything now and they talk back to him so this is a fleshly blood snake. You would think that they would be a little scared, but they, it doesn't record anything like that. Um, so, what most people don't realize is the word for serpent used in Genesis 1 here is the Hebrew word nakash. Now, this word is translated. serpent, but once you dig a little bit deeper into it, you find that it is, um, may not be as what snake we are looking at here, it is a crafty tempter, Genesis 3, 1, a fleeing serpent, an eclipse, a dragon. a snake from its hiss, a serpent. But, um, it may not be the best interpretation, okay? I'll show you why here in a second. Um, we'll go and look at another. Here we have the, the seraph. serpent, usually venomous, possibly even a bug, but beings originally mythically conceived of serpent's bodies and personified of lightning. Excuse me, down here, in heaven, a fiery serpent, a seraph, burning, figuratively, a poisonous serpent. Specifically, a seraph or a symbolic creature from the copper color, a fiery serpent. Um, so we, you know, I believe we're talking about things that the authors of Scripture really didn't understand at the time. So they use a word, you know, but in English, okay, this is. Uh, Isaiah, you know, you're talking about uh, the seraph stood above. It had six wings, six wings, each one, two, and covered his face. 
with and two he covered his feet with and two he did fly with. That doesn't sound like a snake. Right? Doesn't sound like a snake. Um, six, Isaiah 6.6 six. Here we got the uh, Then flew unto one of the seraphim in his hand having a coal and with tongs he had taken the form of an altar. Again, snakes don't fly. And he laid on my mouth and said, You see, has touched my lips, has taken away your iniquity. So this thing's up in, this is when Isaiah, when he gets uh, taken up in the vision or whatever. Let's see, I can't read it. Uh, then he looks So this thing's here. We're dealing with the seraphim that stood above. Yeah, okay. This thing's in the Holy of Holies. Praying to God. Holy is the Lord of hosts. I'm talking to Yahweh. by the Tower of Babel language. So here we got another form of this thing called a cherub. Cherub. Um, of uncertain or no, probably an order of angelic beings. See, we got probably an order and angelic beings. And the other two called them serpents. That's very interesting. Why? Uh, see in this one, Garden of Eden, cherubim, thrones, right? Let's see, let's go down here to it says the images of cherubim were carved with gold plated cedar flakes, which constitute the inner walls of the temple and upon the hollow wood doors. The first king Chronicle was based on what was later done in Ezekiel describes the cherubim. Right. So let's see what Ezekiel has to say about it. This thing's in there, 91 10. Speaks a lot about what's in the cherubim. And here we got Ezekiel. God of Israel is gone. Lord God. Form of cherubim. Or if I know his word, form of two or three shall be in his bosom. Or one or more. This thing is a high, high part of divine counsel. It's in the garden and we weren't dealing with a snake. Translation. We all know snakes don't talk. Right? The Bible does have some metaphorical writing in it, but this isn't one of them, in my opinion. Okay, so. And this isn't really a good depiction either, but it's better than just a snake. Michael Heiser, so he's a explorer, Strong's Concordance, I forget which one it is, but Bible Center, Logos Bible Center, so if you want to just order yourself a copy, you just have to listen to the screen.
uh, of the council, and really it's six of one and a half a dozen of another. So this is what Eden is about. If you want more on that, you could take the course on Old Testament cosmology. So further, again, I, I don't believe, again, this was a normal member of the animal kingdom. I think it was a divine being, perhaps masquerading as an animal or taking some sort of serpentine form who misleads humanity and causes their their mortality, their, their loss of immortality in the garden. My major point, two points, are divine being, not a normal member of the animal kingdom. There are a number of things in the narrative that would tell us this is not just an animal, member of the animal kingdom, talking, the comment about being smarter you know, than any other, you know, animals don't have sentience, they don't have uh, calculating brains that they could do math equations or something like that and they do learn uh, they have intelligence but there's no way that you could uh, measure one's intelligence over the other uh, of course you know to the point of being able to concoct this sort of plan and and of course speak okay we clearly are not dealing with a member of the animal kingdom it's some sort of divine being so the word for that being, that figure in the garden, is Nakash. What I think is going on here is a triple entend. Nakash, as far as the root of the term, the three consonants, Nun, Chet, and Shin in the Hebrew word, these three consonants are the root of a noun, a verb, and an adjective in Hebrew. If we take nakash as the noun, pointing to the noun, that would be the word for serpent. And of course, this is how all the translations go. It's perfectly understandable. There's nothing wrong with it. M what my view says is what's wrong with it is assuming it's a member of the animal kingdom. So nakash could be serpent as a noun. Verbally, the verb means to deceive or practice divination or deception through divination. So, Nakash here could speak of or describe or imply a deceiver or again some sort of uh, being that had divine knowledge and of course in the story uses that knowledge uh, to manipulate uh, humanity. Well, again, this certainly fits the story. Now, these two options many commentators will notice but somehow they still want to gravitate toward a member of the animal kingdom I don't understand the thinking behind that but at least they notice these two items the third gets neglected if you're thinking of how this this root is used adjectivally or an alternative noun uh, it means bronzish or bronze brazen it's shining okay is the point brass shines that's why it's attractive. So if you take Nakash, and specifically the, the Hebrew text has Hanakash here, it has the definite article, the term would mean the shining one. And I think that needs to be factored into the discussion of Nakash in Genesis 3 because shining or luminosity is a quality that is frequently applied to divine beings in the Hebrew Bible and lots of other places in the ancient Near East. So this is why I say we have a triple entendre going on. We have some sort of being either manifesting as a serpent or a serpentine uh, creature, but it's not a creature, it's not a member of the animal kingdom, it's a divine being who is luminous, shining, and has special divine knowledge and deceives humanity again when you when I explain it that way I think you're gonna think well you know that sounds kinda normal well and, and it is I'm not saying anything that's just really odd or off the beaten path what I'm trying to